you're listening to Transformation at Work, your one-stop guide to Salesforce success. And this is Project Rewind, real stories of business transformation and Salesforce success in our customers' own words. Our Jarrett practice leaders and real Salesforce users are sitting down for an in-depth look at the challenges they face and how digital tools help them improve processes and deliver outstanding results. In this episode, we're sitting down with members of Care Australia, an international humanitarian aid organization, and Jarrett ANZ, the Australian and New Zealand-based arm of Jarrett, to discuss how they came together to open up a new avenue to help uplift individuals and their communities out of poverty through the world of microfinance. Launching a business can be a life-changing experience. It can radically transform your present and your future and often provide incredible new opportunities for you, your family, your loved ones, and your entire community. However, it's not exactly an easy endeavor to undertake. Even if you're a one-person operation working out of your own home, there are no shortage of roadblocks and hazards to potentially block you from achieving that long-term sense of financial success and security. And in fact, one of the largest challenges that people face, especially individuals from lower income and financially underprivileged communities, when it comes to starting a business is, well, you need capital to do it. Supplies, labor, transportation, logistics, these things all cost money. And unfortunately, all over the world, for folks in those lower income communities, the options for borrowing that money, well, they're not great. High street lenders with like very, very, very high fees and therefore you can't ever repay if you struggle in the first place to meet you at the month's end with your bills. That's Arnaud Charlier, head of data and platforms performance at Care Australia. For decades, Care Australia has been working to offer alternative methods of financial support to communities in need to help individuals lift themselves and the people they care about out of the cycle of poverty. Here's how he puts it. Care started in 1991, a product that was very innovative back then that is called the Village Saving and Loan Association. And what that product was about was to help people throughout Africa, um, Eastern Europe, Latin America, to help some small communities with a fund that was self-managed by the small community and more often than not self-managed by women. So, And those communities would then decide how to spend the money. So, And they would then have to decide how it gets repaid so that the fund can continue to be used by other people within that community. And so it could be that, I don't know, so, uh, someone would want to send their kid to school, for example, they would need a little bit of that money and then they would repay over time so that the money is still there for the community to, you know, to continue using it. Now, this model has enabled Care Australia to bring a tremendous amount of support to the communities they serve. But recently, they've begun to pivot their approach towards a new kind of fundraising and a new kind of financial activism microfinance. Here's Arnaud with an explanation. So microfinance refers to small loans and uh, financial services that are provided to low-income individuals who don't have access to capital through standard format. So they don't have a bank account or they don't have credit ratings, that sort of stuff. In countries with uh, very limited job opportunities, those people are often you know, self-employed, running small businesses from their home. They might be doing things like, like market stalls, car repair, carpentry, small workshops. Like in rural area, you might have things like a more food-focused agriculture and livestock business. These sorts of microloans often provide a vital leg up for entrepreneurs without access to traditional capital through banking to get stable footing beneath them to help achieve their business goals. And this is an especially powerful support to have when you consider how many of these business owners are women caring for their communities. And having that footing beneath them allows these women to, in turn, share that wealth and lift up not just themselves, but all of the people around them at the same time. Another interesting point around this is that we found over time that when one woman breaks free from poverty, she invests in her family and community. And what that means is that she, we call it, there is a ripple effect that is connected to that. And um, when one woman comes out of poverty, she usually brings up with her for the people around her out of poverty at the same time. So there is a, a bit of a multiplier effect there. 
Embracing microfinance is a model presented an opportunity for Care Australia to take its mission to the next level and uplift even more individuals, especially women and girls in underprivileged community, and into a more stable and financially secure living situation. We like to try to help people help themselves with a hand up, not a handout. And so that's where microfinance really plays its part because we're definitely helping that group of women because it's the microfinance tends to be somewhere around 95% towards women. We really wanted to um, find a way to continue helping those people in, a, in particularly, but in a way that um, take them out of poverty in the long run, not not just to you know provide some point-to-point help at some time that wouldn't uh, make a long-term difference. Microfinance does make a long-term difference. Now, this is a wonderful goal that has the potential for a remarkable impact on people's lives. But as is often the big question that comes with these kinds of goals, how do you act on it? How do you raise the money to support these kinds of microloans? How do you track them and ensure they're being paid back? How do you build a model that can scale to ensure that it does the most good possible? For Care Australia, this meant taking a two-pronged approach. First, they focused on micro donations from individuals as Arnaud breaks down here. We actually engage um, Australia, the, the Australian community to be the lenders for those micro loans. And so um, we um, so that's why we have a website, the front web, the front end uh, to that service, because you as an individual, you can go on to that website, which is called Lend with Care, and you can uh, chip in. You know, 20, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, um, whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but because it's a loan, you get your money back. So um, so an important part of the technology as we're going to continue digging into that um, is, is, is that interaction between the lender and um, the um, and how you know, they can lend and get the, their money back um, at the end of the loan. The other half of Care Australia's model is partnering with trusted financial institutions to ensure that that money is distributed correctly and that the investment in these individuals doesn't stop at cutting a check. What we're trying to do differently compared to them is that we really want to work with um, financial service organizations in country that are socially focused and that we can work with to provide what we call wraparound services. And so the idea is to not just help provide the capital for those micro loans, it's also about being able to say, provide um, financial literacy trainings and other services that are going around microfinance because the research shows that um, providing a loan in and by itself is not, is often not quite enough to uh, help people Uh, coming out of poverty. Now, all of this is a very ambitious model. And as is often the case, with ambition comes complexity. And in Carol Australia's case, that translated to a tremendous amount of infrastructure that needed to be put into place to make this model a reality. What does that entail was to create a back-end system for the microfinance product based off Salesforce to create a portal for the FSP. So the FSPs are the financial service providers and they're the in-country organization that do the lending directly. And so what happens is they need a portal to then go and upload information about the loan and then it gets published onto the the main website, the, the Lend with Care website. So the, and the website was the third thing that uh, Gerant helped us building. Um, And all that technology is 100% Salesforce, basically. So we did everything using Salesforce. Now, the question becomes, how do you actually go about building this infrastructure to help Care Australia's model come to life? That is where Jarrett ANZ came into the picture. We want to be the preferred non-for-profit implementation partner in the APAC region. And, um, you know, we're not just saying this, but demonstrating this through our actions and intentions uh, on how we go about it and our thought process behind it. That's Pradeep Luxmarina, Managing Director of Jarrett ANZ. Pradeep brings over 20 years of experience in business technology consulting to the conversation, the past five of which has been in the nonprofit space. The planning of implementation 
before that how we should approach this project was the first thing because this is a first of its kind. And that's Amit Kumar, principal consultant at Jaren ANZ, who has spent the past eight years implementing CRMs for various organizations. Amit and Pradeep were both deeply involved in helping Care Australia customize its Salesforce solution to serve its microfinance goals, which means that they saw up front the challenge that this kind of implementation could offer. So we didn't have a lot of understanding of personas and uh, what are the journey because out of the box, non profit uh, database or the data model that they have, Salesforce had, didn't actually meet with the RFP requirements. On its own, a first of its kind project such as this is challenging in its own right. But when you factor in the realities of timing and budget, that challenge comes into an even sharper focus. Because of the past experience with other non-for-profit, the reality is that non-profit organizations have limited resources, have limited budgets, right? So the solution had to actually meet that sort of requirement. From that perspective, we also had uh, limited time because uh, Care Australia had a time in mind that they wanted to implement that project and we have less than about three, uh, three and a half months. It was like a challenge. It was a mammoth task. Tackling that time crunch was the first major issue Jaren ANZ had to face as they worked to understand the needs of Care Australia's two distinct audiences, individual lenders and larger financial institutions. That meant identifying ways that out-of-the-box solutions within Salesforce could be laid on top of Care Australia's existing implementation to streamline the process overall. Here's how Amit puts it. What we started doing from a planning perspective is that, well, let's look at what we can build out of the box, which is uh, not only uh, give us the time to actually just put that into practice, but also look at how we actually leverage existing solution that Care Australia have because they have a Salesforce platform and we were not limited to, and from a, what they have in the platform from that perspective we started looking at how we can actually plan that solution from an implementation perspective to look at uh, building on top of what they have rather than reinventing the entire world so that's where we started with the data model now leveraging out of the box solutions freed up capacity for jaren anz to complete the project but there still remained the large challenge of two separate external audiences that the implementation needed to support, a proposition that naturally adds a great deal of complexity to the project. Not only would the finished web portal need different functionality for both of these audiences, but as Carol Australia noted during their work with a previous design partner, they'd need to look and feel different as well. Prior to the engagement with Gerant, we engaged another organization specializing in human-centered design and experience. So we built a, um, a mock-up site with them, basically. And so the brief was, well, this is what we want you to build. Obviously, right now, it is just a mock-up, but that should give you a good idea of what we expect from a lender perspective. The requirement for the FSP portal were very different. We wanted them to, we wanted that to be simple, easy to use, but there was no UI specific related things. So the Gerant team was able to leverage all the out of the box components for that, and that works really well uh, from that perspective. So that made it a much faster, much quicker, and much simpler to to build for for them. When you compare that that lender site and that um, FSP portal. What that meant in practice was that Jaren ANZ couldn't rely on the same website or functionality for both individual lenders and financial institutions, and that ultimately they'd need to build multiple separate experience cloud sites to support the entirety of Care Australia's need. We discussed about the standard uh, and personas because uh, not only that we have implemented one platform, but we have did actually two different sites within the existing Salesforce environment. So we have a site for lenders that is actually focused specifically on the Australian market. And then we have a a site which is focused on FSP, which is financial service providers and borrowers, which is actually for uh, overseas because we, we need to understand the personas that we have within Australia versus what we have in overseas are two different. We wanted to make sure that it's easy to use. So we actually built two different experience cloud sites. 
Now, once that infrastructure was in place, then there came the need for deeper conversations, the kind that are all too common in many nonprofits. Namely, how do you ensure that implementing Salesforce adds as little cost as possible to Care Australia's bottom line so they can continue to send as much money as possible to the communities that they serve? What Care Australia is doing is basically 100% going back to the borrowers. So we had to come up with a solution where the cost that Care Australia will do in terms of managing the site and, you know, the processes, it doesn't add up a lot of cost to their uh, day-to-day donation process. So our solution was built around, let's look at automation. Let's look at a platform that is scalable. Let's look at a solution that can be taken from dream to delivery within the three months. So that was our uh, approach. Then, of course, whenever you're dealing with money, you also have to acknowledge the necessary discussions of security, responsibility, and ensuring that governmental compliance is maintained throughout the process. So we implemented a solution um, which was looking at the security, was looking at giving that control back to uh, Care Australia so that there is no fraudulent activity uh, considering money laundry and all that. Within Australia, we are hugely regulated. So we needed a platform that provides Care Australia with all that governance. Then on the second hand, we had the time as a challenge, right? So because we had to implement a solution within this three months. So we started doing a parallel development. So we actually went with the first po- uh, site, which is for financial service provider. Which, so our, um, the way we looked at is having that site ready, having that processes ready as much as possible within that time frame. And as much as they'd been able to rely on out-of-the-box options up until this point, when it came time to create governance for something this complex and ambitious, Jared A and Z needed to, well, roll up their sleeves and create a great deal of it from scratch. And we were looking at uh, out-of-the-box, but unfortunately, a lot of solution that needed for governance wasn't coming out-of-the-box solution. We had to build custom component, which was exposed on the Lend with Care site, because that needed a lot of uh, features that we couldn't just deliver from what we have today. Add to that the issue of urgency, and well, you find yourself in a difficult situation. How do you address each of these issues without putting the business on pause? while still delivering all of the necessary infrastructure you need within the time frame needed. This simply isn't something that you can tackle focusing on one issue at a time, which is why Jaren A and Z instead put their efforts into a divide and conquer approach. So we started uh, working on that uh, significantly. And we divided our team into two because one of the uh, team was looking at governance and implementation. And the major part of Care Australia's objective was a seamless UX UI experience for the lenders in Australia. So the, saying that there was a big piece of UX UI work that Care Australia was doing, um, having some expert to actually guide us. And this site wasn't actually just had to be built for you know one device. We had to look at because being a website. They wanted to be uh, be able to be responsive across different platforms, different dif- devices. So, like I said, we split the team. One of a uh, couple of members were focused on just bringing that experience and that capability within our sites, while the other team was focused mainly on backend development. Now, this is a lot to put on any one team's plate. This is no easy feat taken all together. But that's where close, careful teamwork between Jaren ANZ and Care Australia became truly vital for the success of the project overall. I think one of the great learning would be that Jaren and Care Australia are great partners together. I have to admit, because we delivered something which was challenging. Having been in this industry for 20 years, the resource dedication was really, really at at a different level. We had resources who were working continuously for, you know, 24 hours, not one day for multiple days. So the learnings that we had was a great team building, 
Um, I think that we had good people, um, good leadership, and I think that was one of the positive uh, learning for this project. We wouldn't be able to achieve this, you know, without everyone's contribution support and working as one team, one vision. You know, uh, this includes, you know, uh, there was no, uh, I guess, no limits on the hours spent, uh, you know, whiteboard conversations, brainstorming sessions, uh, although not perfect <laughs> at times, but, uh, you know, we, we, rise, we rise together as a team. All in all, it was no small uplift, but by closely collaborating, splitting the work and focusing on adding out of the box options on top of an existing Salesforce offering, Jaren ANZ was able to bring Care Australia's offering to fruition. And the result of that work is, well, it means Care Australia is able to make its mission a reality and provide direct impact for communities and individuals in need. When um, a small loan goes to a woman to fund a small business, in countries that don't have uh, the cultural and the social norm to support gender equality, the micro loans can empower women by giving them the means to become an entrepreneur, to generate income, or to sort of like gain uh, greater control over their finances, their family finances. And according to a UN research, families who've got access to f- uh, microfinance are less likely to pull their kids out of school, for example, and have more resources available to pay for healthcare and, and, and other things like that. So so the, the vision for care is really to create communities with a sustainable source of income, which microfinance can very much help with. This is not just a technology project. It's really about lifting people from the low socioeconomic uh, backgrounds. You know, from my perspective, I, I see it as leveraging technology to improve human lives and, and, and the wider society. So, um, you know, I've always believed that technology should be the enabler for the business, never the reason. And this is a true demonstration of that. And that is Transformation at Work. This has been Transformation at Work. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Amit, Arnott, and Pradeep for a wonderful conversation and some incredible insights throughout the episode. Transformation of Work is, as always, produced by Jaren in collaboration with Salesforce. I am Jeff Stormer, your host and producer. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, or head to jaren.com to sign up for email updates when we release new episodes. Until next time, thank you again for listening, and we hope to see you again soon.